episode number 49. We are quickly coming to our 50th show and I, at the end of it, end of this today's show, I have a special announcement for the 50th anniversary show. So so that with that, I want to, uh, sorry, I want to welcome you and I want to welcome all our viewers. And I want, and this is, for those who are joining us for the first time, this is Hindu Lounge. Hindu Lounge is brought to you by Hindu Pact. Hindu Pact is Hindu policy research and advocacy initiative of World Hindu Council of America, VHPA. Uh, with me, as always, it's Utsav, Utsav Chakravarti. Utsoda is the executive director of Hindu Pact, and I am Ajay Shah. I am the president of World Hindu Council of America, or VHPA. Uh, and we come live every week at 11 o'clock Eastern, and we are live on YouTube, we are live on Facebook, and we are live on Twitter, on all our uh, social media channels. Uh, so that today's episode is, on, is something that we have periodically talked about in the show, but this week, um, it seemed like from every direction, uh, this issue was taking a center stage in California, most, and in California. So today's show, is about the caste resolutions in the United States. And uh, just a little bit of background, so the, uh, this, the, the San, uh, Santa Clara uh, City Council uh, uh, is a county and a human rights commission of Santa Clara has appointed a subcommittee that was going to discuss a caste as a protected class. Okay, and that was the resolution. I am going to, um, I'm going to share this resolution, but before I do that, and before I forget, I just want to remind all our viewers that this is a dial-in show. Please do call in. Uh, the numbers that you can uh, uh, you can use to call in, I'm going to post them on the chat as well. But here are the numbers to call in and participate in this show. We welcome your participation in the show. Um, so here is the here is the Human Rights Commission's November twelfth, twenty twenty. Uh, regular meeting, and you can see that in this regular meeting, uh, uh, Tani Mori uh, Sondra Rajan uh, from Equality Labs provided information related to historical background of caste system, uh, caste system hierarchy, and the caste system in modern world. She provided further information relating to widespread caste discrimination in South Asia and in United States. And we'll go over what, uh, what is this based on. But, uh, you know, continuing on this, Ms. Saldarajan uh, recounted acts of caste discrimination in workplace, educational institute, and everyday life. And then it led to this, uh, in a 14 to zero vote, it led to the appointment of this uh, particular commission to look into caste in uh, South Asia. So, so that, uh, with, uh, with that, I will turn it over to you to tell us about a little bit about what is uh, what is caste. So let's start with that. Um, and we have done a whole show on what is caste, but I want to turn it over to you uh, to describe to our viewers what caste is and what is the historic background of caste. And then from that, we will uh, we'll go and dissect the actual, um, the actual resolution. Okay, so that to over to you, please uh, go ahead and give your introductory remarks, a general welcome, and then talk about what caste is. I think we have discussed this topic before, but before I jump into the topic of today, and you know, this is something that we have been dealing with for a while. This is our 49th show, and I really want to thank my wife, Liliana, for being just the most amazing supportive person on this effort. Well, I just want to talk about the how these things are happening. So there is there is a pattern here, and people can generate their own analyses based on that pattern. The pattern that is coming out of these quote unquote caste resolutions that are coming up in different cities has a trend. It comes from an individual named Sondarajan Tenmori, who is who is supposedly leading a group called Equality Labs, very nicely named. And we have talked about equality labs before. But behind this front person named Tenmori Sundarajan, there are other individuals who people need to look into. And in this history of equality labs, they have been partnering with 
really, really won wonderful organizations. And I say wonderful with a lot of sarcasm. They have been partnering with Kashmiri separatists and Islamists. They've been partnering with terrorists from Khalistan movement who have wrecked havoc in the Indian subcontinent about 20 years ago. They have been partnering with individuals and, and, and organizations that are known to spread stark Hindu phobia in the United States. And this organization has somebody named Sharmin Hussain as a leading uh, strategist uh, and, and communicator within this organization. So keep that in mind. And another thing to be kept in mind is that these resolutions usually come up in places where there is somebody from the Pakistani American community involved in the, in the cities, in the counties. Uh, for example, in the case of this particular one in Santa Clara, there is a person named Shahanawa Saigal, uh, who is a commissioner who actually is the one moving this resolution. So I'll just let people gauge this pattern and try to understand what is driving this effort to create fault lines along around the Hindu community, within the Hindu community in America. Because the, Hindu, the more fault lines that can be created within the Hindu community, the more they can be divided in America, the more they can be targeted. And that's where I think the, this whole narrative of quote unquote caste is being brought in. Uh, so the, why don't we start with, uh, you know, explaining, uh, and we have done this as a whole show, mm. but many people may not have uh, joined previously uh, because it was one of our very early shows. So why don't we start with what is caste and, uh, and, the, and then we'll go into the relevance of caste in America. We'll go over this survey that Equality Lab did, uh, which is really not a scientific survey, but it's basis of all the resolutions. But we will we'll cover that. But first, let's start with what is caste, Sada? Uh, I, because really, caste, the word caste does not appear in any of the Hindu scriptures, correct? Absolutely. So in fact, the word caste first appears in Europe to describe lineage, race, or breed. And it comes from the word casta, which is a Portuguese origin word. So think about it. The word, the entire cause that is being espoused here and, and, and the Indian American the community and the Hindu community is being targeted with, the entire word that, that is being used to describe this cause actually doesn't even originate from the Indian subcontinent. It comes from Portugal from 16th century. And, and this has been used to categorize professional guilds in Asia, the word caste, by the European colonial powers in the 18th century. You know, it was done by the Portuguese, it was done by the, by the uh, Dutch, the French, as well as by the English, who eventually took over most of the colonial, uh, you know, strategic areas of Asia. And this mirrors what was being done in Europe in the 16th century. So, so you can see that how it's, it's a legacy of colonialism because the entire word and the concept behind that word is actually an import from Europe. Caste, the word caste doesn't find any mention in any canonical Hindu scripture, never. Nor in any other philosophical schools, you know, any Buddhist schools, thoughts, any uh, Jain uh, philosophical schools or in any, uh, within the diversity of the Hindu philosophical schools in, you know, Advaita, Vishishtadvaita, no mention of caste. We strongly condemn this because, you know, when you make some, some resolution on the basis of something and target a population segment, at least do the research to know where it comes from. So, so this whole thing actually is based on a false narrative. And, and the worst part is that these discriminations, even, you know, th th there are Jati and there are uh, 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 Varna concepts within the Hindu scriptures, and they do talk about uh, social hierarchies. Uh, but this is the most important but here. Those things have been given up in legally by the Hindu society. And within India, if you travel within India, I mean, politics aside, you know, in society politics brings up its own uh, discriminations. But it is not, it is not legally possible in India to promote discrimination on the basis of caste, just like it is not legally possible to promote slavery in America. Even though both the Bible as well as the Quran has the concept of slavery and clearly talks about slavery. But that doesn't mean that you, you target Christianity and Islam 
for slavery. Nobody does that in America or Europe. But this is being done with respect to Hindus on the basis of caste, even though the word caste doesn't exist in any Hindu scripture. So, so this, is, this is the concept I think we need to be very clear upon. And, and as Hindus, we need to be educated to understand this. And, and that is also one of the reasons why uh, you know, it is important that we talk about it more because if we don't have our own concepts clear and our own understanding of what we are doing, then somebody else, in this case, you know, Islamist groups, the Equality Lab, and you know, such sundry organizations will take control of the narrative, which is what they are doing right now. And, and we, are, we are really not well equipped to counter it because we are not educating our own populations about these issues. Uh, that is a Paul, that is a point that is really really important to kind of keep in mind that this is it is not a nobody I mean so that nobody in their right mind nobody who is a rational human being or even a human being I would say would come up and say that they stand for discrimination uh, that discrimination of any kind has no place in any society uh, not in Hindu society not in any other society. And we firmly stand as individuals, as organizations against any kind of discrimination. We, we all stand for diversity. We all stand for inclusion. We all stand for equal treatment, social justice. In fact, I think that social justice is baked in to the Hindu ethos. Uh, and, and not just that. I mean, since these people are targeting people of Indian origin, they need to understand that social justice is baked into very strongly within the Indian constitutional framework. Correct. I mean, the, the way Indian constitution, in fact, the writer of the Indian constitution is the person who created this concept of social justice in the Indian subcontinent. He wrote the Indian, so you know, to, it's, it's such an ironic uh, way of targeting uh, the Hindu community. And, and look, I mean, uh, the universal franchise right to vote was granted in India right at the inception of India's independence. So this is the kind of social justice. The, the fact that Dr. Ambedkar was actually the, the, considered the father of the Indian constitution, one of the primary authors, many people involved, but the primary author of the Indian constitution uh, and the concept of social justice built into Indian constitution and without, uh, you know, without any substantial opposition, even before that, I mean, I think if you look at the history of independence movement in India, a lot of, uh, a lot of the upliftment of people who were downtrodden, people who were traditionally discriminated, were not uh, were economically improvised, all of this was, you know, were integral part of India's freedom movement. India, Indian freedom fighters did not say that we'll talk about social justice after the independence. They, if you look at Gandhiji and the way the ashrams were set up by Gandhiji, if you look at what uh, you know, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and his Indian National Army, all of these places, on all of no, these no, leaders, not just, but even he, RSS, Gandhi has uh, has actually been on record praising the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, which, by the way, these very organizations that are bringing up this you know pseudo caste uh, resolutions in America. Uh, consider uh, RSS as a fascist Nazi organization. They won't leave any word. Uh, uh, I, I, Gandhi I, I, went on record about. I, how I don't know if you know this, but I, I do have a slide on that. And I was going to, you know, now that you brought it up, I'll I'll pull that slide forward and then talk about the other uh, talk about the other issues in, in a minute about the Santa Clara Resolution and the Cal State Resolution. But since you brought up RSS, I was going to I was going to talk about it. But let me just talk about it up front. So the I. Do you recognize the two people on this slide? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So that I, I am a person who can never tell uh, by looking at the people, looking at the last names, what people's caste is. I believe in, you know, just really truly classic, being class agnostic while being mindful that there are, uh, you know, that, that anywhere you see injustice, you have to fight. Injustice to anyone is injustice to everyone and you have to fight it. But the reason I bring this slide up so the, on the left, for people who have not seen this, uh, don't know this, and who don't know about how, you know, and they who have bought into this narrative that RSS and uh, in India and Hindutva people in general, and we consider ourselves to be Hindutva proudly so, uh, that Hindutva people are casteist and they stand for upper caste and all this narrative. On the left is the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. And on the right is the President of India, uh, Ramnath Kovind. Yes. Right. 
also the I had to actually read the papers to figure out what their cast is because again we don't pay attention to such things. This is the kind of stuff that you know uh, people who want to make political living out of can make a case out of. So, so that now that we know about it, tell us what is the cast of these two. So no, no. Uh, the first thing is I think before we showed this slide and and this you know we should have actually shown the amount of hatred that these organizations like Equality Labs and all these you know Islamist fund supported uh, narrative builders uh, who go around doing this quote unquote caste uh, resolutions, they spread so much venom and hatred against RSS and against Prime Minister Modi of India, uh, calling them Nazis, casteist, and whatnot. What needs to be known, and this is for those Americans who fall for this trap, and also for those Indian Americans and Hindus who fall for this trap, because there are, I, I can, you know, there are hundreds and thousands of Hindus who are just plain ignorant and are good. Some of them are well-meaning people who don't know these things. So the person on the left is the Prime Minister of India, and he comes from a backward class community, quote unquote, caste community, as as the as the Europeans described them. Uh, from, he's the prime minister of India, the supposed Nazi fascist, what not, what blah, blah. You know, he belongs you, to you, other you, backwards. You, know, you read New York Times, you, you will understand yeah. it. <laughs> Washington Post, New York all spreading this, you know, I, I don't want to use bad yeah. words. Uh, but he's the prime minister of India, the more, one of the most hated by the leftists. And, and left probably and the leftist most powerful leftist. politician in India, right? right? Probably one of the top five powerful politicians in the entire world. And the most popular political leader in the entire world, because he won by the number of votes that he won with, makes him the really the most popular leader in the entire world. That's right. Uh, he is from a backward caste, by the way, even though he doesn't talk about it, and we shouldn't have been talking about it. And we should have been talking. This is our I mean, failure. It, me, it it really makes me feel bad that we have to actually talk about it yeah, because yeah. because uh, this is the, this is the outcome. This is this is the victory of these fake caste really, yeah. narrative builder we, because now, now we are people, forced to talk about the prime minister and, of and india's caste a, pe making people who maybe making people ca you know uh, recognize the caste of the people who have risen above it uh, and again there is no caste uh, the word caste is foreign we should have been talking about varna and jati and other things which are which were already done but to talk about the prime minister of india who has risen through all of this and above all of this rather and we are now talking about this. So this, and, and he's the ways, one who's been called the casteist here, by by the way, by these uh, you know Islamist right. pro proxies. And and tell and, us about the person on the right, the president of India. Person Ramnath on the right Kovin. is the president of India, and he's Ramnath Kovin, and he belongs to what the Western media calls the Lit community of India. So look at this: a country which has more than six years of RSS managed Hindutva rule is led constitutionally and politically by two leaders, one of whom is the most political, uh, politically powerful leader in the Indian subcontinent, both of whom come from the lowest categories of India's so-called caste system. And they both rose through the hierarchy in RSS. And they RSS. both rose through the hierarchies and got the positions they got. And that is why, despite, you know, so th this is something that every time we get targeted, but you know, let me take a step back, Ajay Bhai. This is also the reason why we, we have already lost the narrative to some extent. The fact that we are forced to talk about this because of the attacks coming from the Islamist proxies already proves that we have become, they have, they have managed to divide us because now we are forced to talk about our right. people's caste. So, so, so the, but this is, isn't this really the point that if uh, Tani Moi uh, Sondarajan was really interested in upliftment of all people she would be taking pride in the rise of uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Kirwin. And she would be saying to the, uh, she would be telling the world that, look, the progress is being made. Let us join everyone and, uh, you know, participate in this progress and, uh, you know, bring about the, you know, continue working on the social equality, social justice, upliftment of everyone, uh, you know, from, from every aspect. But the fact that she is going around and propagating the caste theory should imply that there is some other bigger agenda that she has. And that other bigger agenda that she has comes from people who really don't want to see Hindus making this kind of progress that is indicated in this slide with Prime Minister Modi and President Kovin. So then we'd start analyzing that and saying that, who are the people, who are the forces that want to bring up this narrative? 
and that is what you know the you know our belief is and you know obviously we have not uh, you know we have not done deep research into it but the obvious thing is that when when uh, tanimoy goes around and finds a uh, you know a pakistani to lead a resolution or to constitute a committee hr committee human rights committee within the human rights commission of santa clara or within the cal state university it means that there are bigger forces and those are the forces that have always tried to either convert hindus by force fraud or inducements and i think she is just a tool uh, equality labs and so, so i want to say something more ajay bhai i want that, to say something more we you know it is extremely difficult to track economic transactions so you know therefore the accusations we are making are going to be uh, absolutely in, in terms of talk about in terms of visible pattern, any of that yeah in terms yeah. of visible patterns of social uh, uh, interactions and yep. and people have to make their own conclusions out of it and i'm pretty sure people are smart enough to do that so what yep. I, what, what needs to be noticed is that this entire equality labs project that kanimori uh, tenmori runs tenmori runs it and there has been a change in the support system that has propped this movement up yep. it started off with church support from the church of south india which is a protestant evangelist sub, uh, church that is based out of the united states and is extremely heavily involved in conversion activities in india yep. that's where her initial support came in the first couple of years of her movement then it slowly moved into support from the extreme left leaning organizations yeah uh, which have been kind of the bridge between the islamists and the cr- christian right wing groups because you know in in american political space the christian right wing and the uh, and the islamists actually don't talk to each other they hate each other but when it comes to targeting hindus they somehow come together and that coming together process happens under the under the larger umbrella of the extreme left groups so you can see you can see uh, you know uh, uh, so these are the breaking india forces right these are the as 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 raji malhotra as raji malhotra would say these are yeah. the breaking With india forces new credits forces. to raji malhotra and it is it is really interesting how much of an interest they have because they don't like each other none of them like each other yeah, none of them like, each, like other. each other the christian right they they are at each other's throat in within american political space yeah but come the hindu stands in front of them and they are all together trying Absolutely. to take every you know every bit of flesh out of their of the hindus bones <laughs> so yeah. no no really that, that's I where mean, the tenmozi uh, kanrajan and, and, and sondarajan project and equality lab project comes from and now it is completely in the in the in the good graces of the islamists especially after india removed article 370 from jammu and kashmir since then there has been a general trend of this movement being supported and regularly prompted up within america's political space by people who have either a pakistani connection and, and, or know, the, the most interesting part is that in uh, you know we don't want to go to today but in uh, the uh, the previous uh, constitution of jammu and kashmir when the article 370 was in place was probably the most discriminatory towards dalits in anywhere Uh, there exactly. are certain kinds of jobs that were designated for them and no no the, the, and, and, they, they, they basically the gave the they, they basically gave the the article 370 in jammu and kashmir which the islamist support and which tenmozi never ever tenmori never spoke against because yeah. obviously she, she she her fundings or whatever is behind it well that's her funding but her yeah. ideological leanings uh, yeah her, her entire support structure will stop supporting her she never spoke about the fact that when article 370 existed in the indian state of jammu and kashmir the biggest target of that article were the so called dalits within the hindu society and the women absolutely and and not one organization in america which speaks for all these you know anti hindu anti india causes spoke about it but now that article was removed and indian government fully integrated jammu and kashmir into india and applied the indian constitution there Yeah. thus helping the so called dalits and the and the women population of the state these people have been fund- i i won't use the word funded because i cannot show bank transactions but they have been supported and prompted by islamists who call it use the banner of caste to target us as so, hindus so the, let's uh, let's go to uh, let's go to uh, some of the so we had a response to that right 
So we had a response to this uh, resolution that I showed earlier. Uh, the resolution uh, talked about, as you can see, they want cast as a protected class, which makes um, uh, the legal process of uh, suing someone under discrimination on the basis of caste easier. And they're saying uh, the equality lab to establish caste as a protected category, not caste system to be protected category. So they're saying that you can individuals uh, and companies can now be held accountable for this so-called caste discrimination. Here is the response that we sent out as Hindu PAC and as VHPA, World Hindu Council of America. And we said that the word caste is a Portuguese origin to your point. Um, then we said that there is no reference to concept of caste in any of the Hindu canonical scriptures, nor in any other religious or philosophical school that originated in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, and then we made a point that, look, I mean, we are we are absolutely against any kind of discrimination anywhere, right? Um, and unlike, unlike other faiths where uh, there is a religious sanction um, on slavery. So, you know, and so that we don't have to go too far into the history to look at that, right? Because when uh, these, uh, uh, you know, when the extremist uh, militant ISIS uh, took over, uh, you know, uh, territories in Syria, they enslaved Yazidis and they said that that's just spoils of their victory. So, I mean, we don't want to go into too much details of that, but, you know, there are recent examples and they justified their religious scriptures to make that point. But let's, let's go past it. The good news here is that there are existing laws. If there is any kind of discrimination, either racial, either religious, ethnic, any kind of based on national origin, ancestry, all of it is really illegal in the state of California. And because it's illegal in the state of California, existing laws should be more than sufficient uh, to take care of any other discrimination that comes along. And this kind of, uh, this kind of a, you know, resolution, uh, if it comes about, or this kind of proposal will only seek to divide the Hindu community. So, so the, take it from here to this uh, second, second part of the statement. It will not only seek to divide the Hindu community, but it will also lead to the othering of the Hindu community. So basically now, you know, it is, it is what was done to the Jews in Germany in, in 1930s. Basically, you are, tar you are going to create a othering an element of Hindus being somebody else. And within Hindus, somebody is being somebody else. And therefore that person needs to be hated. And, and it's, it's going to be a slippery slope of hatred that will only lead to hate crimes. And Hindus are already very familiar with the hate crimes that happen against them. You know, not just in terms of the physical violence that happens, that happens so often. I mean, Hindus are thrown in front of a train in, in New York subways because they look different and, and, and they, they are different. But not only that, it will also lead to micro hate, which is everyday bullying in, in public spaces. You know, Hindus face that too. Hindus are often and regularly told that they are going to hell for not being who they, for being who they are. So, you know, it, it is, if this is allowed and this is promoted under this false narrative of caste, we need to be, we have to get ready for similar increase in hate crimes against the Hindu community. And that's going to be very unfortunate for us. And then the last part of our uh, statement was that uh, this overriding intent of this legislation is clearly to divide the Hindu community in Santa Clara County and America and California and all over America, which has lived in harmony for decades, uh, despite the political mechanizations by those uh, machinations by those who misunderstand or hate Hindus and seek to divide Americans rather than unify them. And what is being presented as caste in Santa Clara is routinely practiced in, uh, in, in, by Muslim and Christian communities in the Indian subcontinent. Not just that, the, at least, you know, the so-called caste dif discrimination that, that exists uh, or that used to exist ever, you know, first of all, again, we are using the wrong word. If there is any discrimination that at least in depth, Hindus all were going to the same crematorium. If you go to the Indian subcontinent and other parts of Asia, uh, the Christians don't even uh, allow the burial of somebody from a so-called actual different caste because it's it's a you know European concept that came into the Christians when they converted to Christianity. 
they don't even allow burial in the same grave and same with the islamic community so yeah. you know in death also there is discrimination within these communities and these are never addressed in america or anywhere else in the world so uh, so so that this uh, the uh, the postscript to this is that the meeting that was going to take place um uh, did not happen on april 9th i believe as it was expected uh, but it is it is on the agenda for future so um we will continue uh, to work with all the other hindu organizations and the hindu community at large and make sure that the facts are presented before the human rights commission and the uh, santa clara county supervisors so that this movement actually started a little earlier it was the first test case that they had was actually a brandeis university and this brandeis university uh, was the first one to kind of uh, make a statement that caste will be a protected uh, uh, you know protected class and that was based on a survey uh, a so called survey because it's really not a real survey but a so called survey by a group that we've been talking about equality lab so i am going to put up this survey for all our viewers to take a look at and then uh, you know have you comment on this uh, on this so called survey now i can tell you so that that in no uh, you know in no study of uh, of science that i have done um uh, this can be uh, this can be considered a survey okay uh, i i think if i were to use that in my thesis uh, i would have been laughed out of the university or worse yet i would have uh, you know well let's just leave it at that so <laughs> uh let me let me share this uh this uh, you know the uh, i'm sorry i shared the wrong file um let me i have multiple files open so i, I want to uh this is the file i wanted to share i uh, take a look at this so that i uh, so this is the this is the cast uh, uh, survey okay so as the south asian american community we are uniquely situated whatever and then it says that when we talk about this now this is not a scientific survey okay everyone should know this this is not a scientific survey of south asian community or indian subcontinent community by the way south as i have said in every single show south asian community a south asian is meant to erase word south asian phrase south indian south asian south asian is meant to erase the hindu identity because it's a bracketing of the worst kind is bracketing south asians is bracketing hindus with indians and indians with south asians where it seeks to erase hindu identity now getting past that here is the survey that is really not a survey okay if you go down and if you really read this it talks about caste and everything else uh, but then it talks about survey and it says that this survey is a community survey what is community survey what they did was set up a survey form on some internet website and had their friends fill out the survey they analyze the result and say look everyone who is dalit in america is getting discriminated against and now they take this they go to the mainstream media like cnn like pbs like and uh, and uh, and uh, new york times and npr and they they they, uh, they have these friends of theirs either write on it or talk about it then they go to a university where uh, they have certain leverage on the left and uh, from the left political wing and they say look can you uh, because look now it is all in the mainstream media can you put it on our can you put, can you now put caste as a protected class and they got this done at brandeis university for the first time okay and that that's and now they are using the brandeis university uh, you know uh, a uh, resolution or brandeis university uh, determination that caste is a protected class and they're using it in cal state uh, system 
let us take a look at their survey. Um, so this is the survey, okay? and and basically, it, it's it's a multi-year effort. It's a multi-year effort, and based on this survey, they even got some prominent people. Uh, including some academicians to sign off and say, yes, there is caste discrimination in America. But it's all based on this fake survey or survey of you know, people with vested interest. So, so let me tell you something more. The people who have signed on to this, they were on the side of this agenda even before the survey was done. Somebody like Cornel West was already on the side of this equality labs, quote unquote, equality labs before the survey was done. And funny enough, Cornel West is also on the side of the Maoists in India. He has made statements in support of the Maoists in India. So you can see, you know, there's a pattern again that fit, starts fitting into this game. Uh, so, you know, I, I can, I gave the example of Cornel West because I did see him do these things before even the survey existed. So, <laughs> yeah. So you can see that some of them were not even interested in the survey. They were already uh, running the agenda before the survey was done. They just added their name because they are academicians. That's right. So, so this is the, you know, I, and for people who are interested, they should take a look at this survey because um, there, there is really, without any scientific basis, it makes statements such as, I clearly remember class, my classmates who were upper caste openly asking me my caste and then feeling proud and saying, I can't even think of dating you because you are from a lower caste. Now, anyone can go to any website and write this. There's no name, there's no, uh, there's no reference, there's no way to check if this is true, that is not true. Again, look, nobody, nobody is for discrimination of any kind, but to make up a non-scientific survey. They themselves, uh, Equality Lab admits that this is not a scientific survey. This is a community survey, whatever that means. Never heard that word in, uh, in science, but a community survey, open to all website, just put whatever you want survey, taking that as a basis for passing legislations. That is what, and, and that is what is concerning with Soda because there are vested interests that are anti-Hindu. I keep saying this, they're buying into this. And the second generation, they're going with this to the second and third generation Hindus uh, who do not have this context, the larger context of why this is being done. And telling these second and third generation Hindus that there, there is something inherently wrong with Hindu dharma. And the only way to free yourself is to abandon Hindu dharma. That is really the goal here. The goal is, is not equality. Is the, goal the goal that, is not social justice. That goal is, the goal is for here. Hindu kid to abandon Hindu identity. That is, that the, is where this or, or is even worse, even worse. You know, the goal is to make sure that this becomes such an overarching identity definer that instead of calling ourselves Hindus, uh, future generation of American Hindus will just identify themselves with the so-called caste that these people are so ag aggressively enforcing. Uh, and that is basically their agenda. And you know, when those two things happen, then uh, if, if you start losing identity as a Hindu. And second, you start bringing identity as a caste. You know, they, have man they would have succeeded in bringing up all the fault lines that they could exploit. And the next logical step will be to convert them to another, you know, whoever is going to be having the upper hand in this pouring more support into this agenda will get the upper hand and then try to convert these people. I, I believe it will be both Islamists and uh, right-wing Christians fighting with each other after that. Who gets to convert the Hindus most? <laughs> because yeah. they eventually are both the same thing, uh, just a different book. Yeah. Hey, so I want to take a second to read some of the comments that are coming on the chat. Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, double by... Uh, you know, thank you very much. Dalbai is saying that you're providing us with better understanding on subjects you select. Great service, keep it up. So thank you Dalbai for your encouraging and kind words. Uh, we really truly appreciate it. Uh, Vanna Tiwari Sharmaji, Vanna Sharmaji is saying that um, excellent points, uh, bravo. Uh, so uh, thank you Vanna ji. Uh, Ankush Bhandari ji is saying, well said, this narrative is being spread from the 1800s by West. Uh, by the West, and then uh, he's saying that uh, now, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chandan, uh, da Chandan Bandopadhyay um, is, uh, you know, applauding us. 
and ankush ji is then saying that we see that there are the what three things that they have done in last two weeks report by us human rights com uh, uh, comments on indian democracy us navy in entering the indian waters and yesterday um, there is a you know there was some talk in some media about india pakistan war in next five years so join the dots and it will tell you how they are afraid of india's rise so he's he's relating the attack on uh, you know and uh, you know certainly there is a you know that's a good point that this is this narrative is taking hold because uh, india is on rise and i would say because also hindus are now occupying some of the most prominent positions of people of hindu ancestry uh, at least are occupying some of the most prominent positions in america and i think that is the re you know so i think um, this is one way uh because other ways have not worked so this is one way of bringing them down um and again ankush ji is saying what is this survey anyway so yeah, we agree with you ankush ji what is this survey anyway i i don't think anyone can uh, uh anyone can really talk uh, and say what is this survey it's it's, uh, it's such a made up thing um but but this is where we are in america today um also that we talked a little bit about uh, Brandeis University, and I want to talk also about uh, the other. Uh, so now we we said that this is the effort that is now taking place in other universities also. So I want to give you a couple of examples of uh, what is happening in um, in one of the uh, you know in one of the uh, me uh, board meetings of the student uh, you know the student government basically. um uh, took the resolutions that were passed in various uh, uh various cal state universities so uh, for those who are who, who are not from california and who want to know about the cal state uh, the california's uh, educational higher education system it is a four tier system the first tier is uh, the high end research universities and they are the, uh, the they are the uc systems there are 10 of them like uc berkeley uc uc san diego ucla uc irvine etc the second tier is the cal state university they are not they do grant some phd's but they are not considered to be very high end research universities uh the third is the uh, cal poly there are only two of them i believe two or three of them uh and that they are very specialized at, you know universities uh, technology universities and the fourth is the community college system so the most of the if you look at the you know uh, number of students Uh, cal state universities have the most number of students they are the most prevalent um, in terms of uh, you know the admissions and uh, uh, the number of students uh, as such because uh, the cal they are not as selective they are selective but they are not as selective as the uc system and they are they are spread all across california then like say for example cal state uh, there will be there's one in san diego there's one in san marcos which is not that far apart the 30 40 miles away and there there are one each right and then there is a you know in bay area there are several cal states um, uh, and so all across you know all across um, all across california and so because it has such a large student population uh, this kind of resolution uh, becomes important because then they have this overarching student body that Uh, has representatives from all cal state universities uh, so this is the resolution that was passed by uh, associated students of sacramento state so cal state university sacramento also referred to as sacramento state university and here is the highlighted part resolution calling for csu california state university system to include caste in anti discrimination in, in anti discriminatory policy similar to the resolution in support of swana students this was originally a discussion item but turned into an action item this resolution advocates that caste should be added to csu anti discrimination policy as a way to protect students who face caste based discrimination i voted to support this resolution and it was passed by system wide affairs committee and will now be discussed by cssa board of directors in april so that this was discussed yesterday and it was passed 30 to 0 okay i think there was one abstention but uh, it was unanimously passed by most people who probably have no clue 
about what is cast. So I, I don't know if you see the screen, but you probably don't. So let me share the screen again with you. Um, please take a look at this resolution. This is what got passed yesterday unanimously without any dissenting vote. Your thoughts? Yeah, it, it is basically a, a creeping uh, agenda. So what they're going to use and use other political narratives and try to creep this in and institutionalize it and then use that as the, as the examples or the precedents to do further creep it in and take it up the ladder. So I think this is also a trend that is uh, in, in California, this is happening more because of three reasons. Number one, uh, it's, there is a convergence of anti-Hindu and anti-India forces there. Uh, you have the Khalistani Sikh groups, you have uh, Islamists, you have the extreme left, and you have you know, special interest groups like Ten Mori Sundar Rajan, who are front groups, you know, whose agenda is to basically do the work uh, and, and push these narratives. You have all these entities very strong and powerful in California. And, and also on top of that, you have a huge Hindu American population there, uh, which is by and large, you know, politically very, very aloof, doesn't do much, uh, you know, tries to make a living and, and get a green card eventually uh, once they get old. Uh, so they're even politically even powerless because many of them are just waiting for decades for their green cards. So, so this, this combination of factors makes the Hindu community in, in California, especially a big target of uh, this kind of creeping uh, Hindu phobia. And it's being going to be done using the, you know, quote unquote caste because that's, you know, you're almost using something that nobody can fight against. You know, you, you're going to pretend like it's against discrimination, even though as we described, it has, you know, Indian constitution doesn't even allow discrimination on the basis of caste. It, there is such a strong affirmative action. Oh, so that I have a question for you. I, I don't want to interrupt, but I, I have to ask this. Mm -hmm. With, with all the presence, prominent presence of Hindus in America, in California, you can't get a single vote. Come so on. so One, that, that, that tells us- Is that too us much something. to ask? One vote? That tells us something that the Hindu community in California uh, and, and for, for that matter in, in America in, as a gen, in general, including you know, groups, groups like ourselves, have a, have a lot of work cut out for them. And you know, they need to organize, they need to communicate. I underline the word communicate because you know, there are organizations in other parts of America that can come to the rescue. When I'm using the word rescue also very carefully because apparently whoever was uh, leading the effort in, in this particular situation uh, wasn't successful. So they needed help. Uh, you so know, there I, is... I, look, I mean, I, I, I take, I, as, as, two of us as representatives of Hindu Pact. When I asked that question, it's somewhat a reflect, uh, is somewhat a sign of uh, self-reflection. It that is. Means we as Hindu Pact who and have failed. I mean, there's no other way to put it. We have to be, we have to analyze, we have to be self-critical and we have to, before we say Hindus, you know, when we say Hindus in California failed, I start with us. We also failed. Pact, Absolutely. have Absolutely. failed first before we say anyone else has failed. Absolutely. So this is really meant as a more as a self-awareness, self-criticism, self-analysis that we have not done our job right. Um, when I say job, we are all volunteers. I understand that. But still, uh, if we consider ourselves to be Hindu advocates, we are really so the as Hindu advocates, we failed miserably. And we did not fail in California. I talked about the Brandeis uh, as the first step was Brandeis two years ago. So the, this is the uh, Brandeis statement, very elaborate, lays out the entire position in black and white in a printed document. And they talk about, you know, the civil rights division's interpretation of title six of civil rights act. Um, and they go into all the details as to why they're including class as a uh, as caste as a protected class. Utsuda, if this was in 2018, okay, this was the early warning sign. We 
as the most prominent Hindu organization in America did not do anything about it. We talked about it a little bit, but after that, when it really came to advocacy and taking, really taking the bull by the horn, we failed. So Ajay, I think there, there are a couple of things involved here. I mean, uh, there, there, there has to be a fully admitting that, you know, we, we have much more to do in this aspect and we are literally uh, up against a field of uh, uh, opponents who are outclassing us in terms of the resources they put into this, in terms of the hours and the manpower they put into this, as well as the, as the aggressiveness of their agenda, you know. You know, you got to be thinking about how somebody, you know, literally sits all day and looks around finding, you know, city councils where there is one Pakistani who is going to propose, propose this. So this is the level of research and effort and, and, and aggressiveness that is being targeted against us. And, and in return, I think what is lacking uh, from us, uh, I myself included, is that we are fighting uh, uh, firefighting. And, we, you know, once somebody is targeting us, we try to educate the people we try to uh, share information with them we try to we, we are basically firefighting uh, against some against the something that with our uh, you know hands tied and walls uh, backs against the wall and occasionally we succeed i won't say we haven't succeeded ever occasionally we succeed but more often than not when our entire predicament is based on firefighting you are we are much more likely to fail which is what is happening more often than not Hey, uh, so that I want to uh, I want to quickly uh, pivot now uh, to um, the as we come towards the end of our uh, show today. I want to announce that next week um, is our fiftieth. As I mentioned earlier, is our fiftieth show. And as part of our fiftieth show. I want to announce a special show that is coming up next week. And here is the special show. We could not have a better topic. So the next week, Hindu Lounge 50, we are going to celebrate Ambedkar Jayanti as Omnitude Day. Ekat Mata Divas, where all of us, we want to emphasize the contributions that Dr. Ambedkar has made in bringing about the equality, the social justice among all in India and his contributions to the history of, of India and not just India, but the impact that he has had across the world. So we will have special guests, a special episode, and we will be celebrating Ambedkar Jayanti, which actually falls on 14th of April, but we will be celebrating it as Omnitude Day on our Ekatmata Divas on next Sunday at 11 o'clock as a special Hindu Lounge show commemorating the 50th, uh, 50th episode. Uh, any, any thoughts on that, Utsada, before we move to the next topic? I think there is, you know, the, there is, it is important that our own Hindu communities, uh, communities from the Indian subcontinent, uh, appreciate and understand uh, the role of Ambedkar in, in, you know, in addressing some of the issues that that were an outcome of uh, hundreds of years of colonial subjugation, and and it is important that we communicate that in America to people who are not aware of how we are, you know, what we are facing in this episode, what we are discussing about what we are facing in this episode will be relevant even more once we do the next episode. And it's important for our communities to really do uh, uh, outreach effort and educate people. I, I keep saying this all the time. It's all about education. It's all about sharing information. We are up against a wall. We have our hands tied behind our backs. We don't have in New York Times and Washington Post, you know, as much as even giving uh, two hoots about what we have to say. But still, that should make us even more stronger in terms of addressing and finding ways to address and educate the larger community out there. It should make us even more determined. You know, when you have institutions 
against you, it's all about resistance, uh, as many my, of my friends in the left would say. Absolutely. So that, um, I am personally looking forward to this. I can, I know, I think that this is going to be the the uh, the show next week is going to be really uh, eye opening for a lot of people uh, who have not, you know, who have been born and brought up in America, for example, who have not heard about the, uh, li- you know, the life and the contributions of Dr. Ambedkar has made to uh, the society in general. Uh, I think, and it's going to be educational for everyone. I am eagerly, eagerly looking forward to the show and we'll have some very special guests uh, talking about, uh, you know, talking about uh, social justice, equality, uh, you know, in general, uh, the, the Varna, Jati, caste, um, all of this. So these are difficult issues, but these are the issues that uh, Hindu community and Indian uh, people from Indian subcontinent will have to face head on. And it and- must be noted that, you know, when we bring up an individual like Gandhi or Dr. Ambedkar, or for that matter, any you know, historically luminary, historical luminary from Hindu, Hindu community or from the, uh, any other part of the world, we are not saying that everything about that person and everything about that individual is perfect. You know, nobody says that this is not, there are nuances about everybody. You know, it's just their nuances about great American that, leaders. That's historic context. Yeah, and they come from a historical context. Uh, but at the same time, we also acknowledge their contributions uh, and their roles in making uh, changes and 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 yeah. bringing positivity in Absolutely. many people's lives. So, so this is this is not a hagiography of in any way. I mean, I'm not a strong supporter of hagiography of any individual. But at the same time, it's important to have. Uh, to understand and ad- admire their context and their contributions. Also with that, the Hindu good news of the week. So uh, do you want me to talk about it? I, let me bring up the slide. I, I, I can hardly wait with Sada. This is something I was you know, very disappointed when this news item first came. Uh, this is the good news of the week. So as you know, Sada in India, a lot of the mandirs are controlled by state government uh, in South, but Uttarakhand, uh, a state in the Northern part of India uh, decided that they were going to take charge of 51 temples. And a lot of oppositions, it is a, it is a Bharatiya Janata Party government, supposedly a Hindutva government, right? And they wanted to control the temples and all the Hindu organizations were very, very disappointed. And this was reversed. Please talk about it. Well, the thing is that, uh, and this is, uh, you know, there are a couple of things we need to understand in the larger global perspective. Uh, India is the only safe space for the Hindu community, the majority of the Hindu community in the world. You know? It's the only place where Hindus can find safety. And, and Nepal, of course, is there. But it, it has Nepal has gone through a lot uh, And when it comes to its own Hindu history. Uh, so keep, keep that in mind. And 90% of the world's Hindu community lives in India. I would say 80, 80 to 90%. So keep that in mind too. And then consider the fact that a 3,000, 4,000 years of history, recorded history. Uh, And the recorded history comes with its own monuments, its own temples, its living temples where there is puja going on. There is is, uh, sacraments being practiced. Not having control of any of that. Think about 1.5 billion Hindus in the world living in a space which is the only safe space for them, practicing a religion that has a history of 4,000 years recorded living temples with puja and sacraments and rituals going on and not having control of it. And then look at this news. So you will, uh, most of our audiences will understand the gravity of what this means. More importantly, it will give them a global perspective of where they should be 50 years from now. I would say, and I I would go out on a limb because I don't consider myself limited to uh, somebody who thinks just about the Indian subcontinent. I would say we should have Hindu temples around the world being controlled by Hindus around Asia, all historical Hindu temples, including from Angkor Wat all the way to 
uh, Azerbaijan in Baku, where you have the Atishkas, uh, the Hindu temple of fire, controlled by the Hindu community, that should be our goal. We should be administering our own temples. That's our history. We should have the control of it. But we, we want to definitely say that this is something uh, that happened this week. And so that I, I cannot be happier that at least, um, you know, and that there's a movement. I mean, at, least, at least in one state, we were able to stop this. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it being stopped in every state because this is not something that, um, you know, Hindus, uh, you know, after, after a, a thousand years of foreign rule, um, if Hindus cannot control their own temples, what is the freedom for? You, and, and not only that, I mean, you take the money from Hindu mandirs and you give it to people have donated you know, out of goodwill, people have donated out of their own uh, Shraddha, which is their own faith uh, to a temple for that temple's priest or for the upkeepment of temple and all of that. And you take that money and you give it out and you dole it out to other, uh, other religions or to, for the purposes that it was not donated for. There cannot be a bigger travesty than that. And those are also the very same religions that are spending millions of dollars trying to convert Hindus to their religion. Exactly. In India. But so that today, <laughs> the we, celebrate, today uh, we will do a separate show about uh, the free, freeing of Hindu mandirs. But today we celebrate. Right. So with that celebration done, uh, let's go to the next, uh, the next item on our regularly scheduled list. And I will start with Sada with, uh, I, I'll share my screen and then uh, let, you, let you comment on this. So this is the Hindu Seva Charity Act of the Week. So, the so Seva so, Charity Act of the Week. So, Go for uh, it. I really would congratulate uh, Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America, the World Hindu Council of America, VHPA, for our parent organization. Our parent organization for uh, for taking this effort, making this effort. In fact, uh, my, my wife, after she saw this, she sent it to uh, Children's Bureau for the Illinois State, so that uh, older parents who who you know, support foster care kids can can send this message around and if needed uh, can get their vaccines. Uh, so a kudos to, to Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America for doing the COVID-19 vaccine camp. I haven't checked, so I, I don't know, but I hope that it's also on the VHP America website so that people can go and register, especially in, in Chicago area, people should be sharing this. I shared it with, the, with my wife, uh, as well as to people at Children's Bureau in the state of Illinois. But this is a fantastic effort. This is what makes World Hindu Council of America and organizations like this are unique in many ways. And, uh, and, 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 and Chicago like it, has it's been it's good for the entire community. And I think this is fantastic. No, so and Chicago has work. been a trendsetter. Um, we should uh, admire the Chicago chapter of World in the Council of America. They did the World in the Congress in 2018. Uh, they were the first to have the Hindu Center on behalf of VHPA in Chicago area, which is where this event is taking place, 200 New Bond Street in Sugar Grove, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. Um, we also want to recognize the fact that two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we did a special show on the on Chicago Hindus beating back the resolution, the Hindu phobic resolution against the uh, uh, against the uh, CAA or Constitutional Amendment Act in India, um, and now they are doing the Seva activity. Um, so Nirav Bhai Patel, who is the uh, president of the Chicago chapter, uh, Amitabh Ji, Amitabh Mittal, Amitabh Mittal is the general secretary of VHPA. Uh, Sanjay Bhai Shah. Who is uh, you know who is uh, very active over there, and I don't want to leave out anyone, but a, a whole team, um, and uh, you know I, the, the entire team in Chicago uh, deserves a lot of credit. And uh, 
if if I I I when I say three names and I I don't mean to neglect anyone else, uh, please send me the names and next week I will read all of the names uh, who are part of people who contributed to this and uh, we will definitely can use a report out on this. So so that with that I think. Uh, let us, uh, uh, you know, I, with all the compliments, please, if you're in Chicago area, if you need to get the COVID-19 vaccine, please go to the VHPA vaccine camp happening in Chicago next week. Uh, with that, Utsada, um, we, uh, we go to our last, but the most anticipated uh, segment of the show. And before I go there, I, um, I you know, as is customary, uh, we do have to have, some music, right? Is that the right one? I'm good with it. Or you want the other one? I prefer the first one more. You prefer the first one, okay. One? So that I don't want to make a joke of this, but I think that this is something that we need to be mindful of. This is what is happening in the Indian subcontinent. And here is a journalist. This is about two weeks ago, Ajay Kumar Lalwani, who exposed the Islamic clerics and raised his voice against the atrocity on the Hindu community in Pakistan. 31 years old, he was getting a haircut and he was gunned down. Okay. We get lectures from Imran Khan, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, on how Pakistan is a beacon of freedom and how uh, he is uh, creating a riyasat Madina in Pakistan and look at India which is, you know, in you know, paraphrasing him, not exactly his word, but basic, basically a hellhole for all the minorities. Here in Pakistan, where Hindu girls get abducted every day and get converted, and where a journalist gets gunned down in broad daylight, where Hindu mandirs get destroyed every week. I mean, is this, uh, you know, what do you say to that? If the Pakistan, I would say that people who gunned Ajay Kumar Lalwani down and people like Imran Khan, who are their promoters, who are their supporters, who are their, uh, you know, who give them the cover, they are truly the Hindu phobes this week. Your comments. So I so I want to say something about this because this is also uh, has a connection to what we were discussing earlier today. Most people do not realize that 90% of the Hindus who live in Pakistan, they are the native of the land. They've been there for thousands of years. 90% of them are from the so-called Dalit community, which according to the colonial caste narrative, the lowest uh, and, the, and the most uh, downtrodden of the Hindu communities. Pakistan, as true to its radical Islamist narrative, makes sure that it dif differentiates different castes and breaks them so that Hindus can be divided, which is exactly what they're trying to do here in America using Equality Lab. But that doesn't mean that it gives anything to the so-called lower castes in Pakistan. In fact, most of the victims of violence in Pakistan, in the Hindu community, and most of the victims of forced conversion and slavery are also the lowest quote-unquote caste of the Hindu community in Pakistan. So it's ironic that when Tenmori Sundarajan from Equality Labs and her friends in the Pakistani community who are counselors try to pass resolution after resolution against quote unquote caste, not once do they mention the forced slavery, the forced conversion, and occasionally the murder 
of the so-called lower castes, again in courts of Hindus in Pakistan by the Islamists. If this doesn't cause you to understand, if it doesn't help you to, un to understand what these equality lab-like organizations are doing, then I don't think you will get it anytime. So <laughs> it's, it's, this is an example of how biased and how one-sided the narrative is on this issue. And so that with that, we come to the end of today's show. Um, once again, a reminder, the next week's show, we are commemorating the, uh, the anniversary of uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Uh, so we are, uh, which is on 14th, but we are doing a special 50th anniversary, 50th show of uh, commemorating the Ambedkar Jayanti as the Amtyud Day or Ekatmata Divas for uh, in America. So Ekatmata Divas in America next Sunday with special guests who will talk about uh, the, uh, the upliftment uh, and the, uh, of the downtrodden and the role that Baba Sahib Ambedkar played in uh, writing the Indian constitution, in bringing the people, uh, in providing the social justice uh, to the people uh, who from who hail from the uh, you know communities that were traditionally discriminated against um, the, the jatis that were not uh, you know treated equally, and the role that he played in in providing special provisions in Indian constitution to bring about the social justice and equality, that contribution we will honor, we we'll learn from it, and hope and I I hope really that everyone who you know, we can reach can join the show next week. 11 o'clock Eastern, once again, on Hindu Lounge. This is Hindu Lounge. Hindu Lounge is brought to you by Hindu Pack, which is a policy research and advocacy initiative of World Hindu Council of America, VHPA. And with me, I am Ajay Shah. I'm the president of VHPA. With me, as always, is Utsav Chakrabarti. Utsoda is the executive director of Hindu Pack. Utsoda, um, uh, before we go, we are going to have, again, the decibels have created a special tune just for this particular episode of Hindu Lounge. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing music. Um, we will play that as we, uh, as we exit the show. Any last words before I start the music? No, I just wanted to, you know, this was, this was very uh, interesting to share with our audience. And next week, I hope more and more people join. I hope people invite people who they think need to know more about this. Uh, we do our best to try to educate and, and as well as get educated ourselves while we are doing this. So, you know, this is a joint effort. We are all in this together and we hopefully will continue to work together to make uh, a better life for Hindus and better life for all Americans. So thank you, Ajay Bhai. And uh, With that, is, so that yeah. on to decibels and the special music for episode number 49. Here we go.